So, in spite of it being against my best interests, in celebration of us hitting 10k, I'm once again letting you all decide on what we'll review next on Should You Fap To. No holds barred, toss at me whatever the fuck you want, and I'll review it. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh no. Please play Lego Indiana Jones with me. Lego Indiana Jones is a 2008 Lego game developed by Traveler's Tales and published by LucasArts. It follows the plot of the first three Indiana Jones movies of which you can play in any order you so desire, either alone or in local co-op. That's right, if you want the best experience out of this game, you're going to have to share your prestigious gaming lair with another person. I know, disgusting. But hey, on the bright side, now you finally have someone to ask for a handy when you see Willie Scott in that tight-fitting dragon dress. <laughs> How did we get here? Hey, my name is Hart, and if you're wondering how the guy who normally reviews hentai ended up talking about a 10 year old Lego game, then, then that makes two of us, because honestly, I have no fucking clue either. But we'll get there, we'll figure it out together, figure out why people are so obsessed with beating their dicks to Marion Ravenwood as a literal block of Legos, but more on that later. First off, the story. As I just mentioned, the game follows the original trilogy of the Indiana Jones movies, all of which you damn well better have watched before picking up this game. As unless you're up to date on your Dr. Jones lore, many of the scenes are so heavily summarized that you just won't have a clue as to what the actual shit is happening. However, seen as there's little to no attempt at telling the story through the gameplay, and Lego characters don't exactly speak even during their cutscenes, what you're left with is just a game that makes little to no sense unless you already know the full plot of it going in. However, if you happen to be an active reader of the Indiana Indiana Encyclopedia, well then you're in luck because now you get to watch all of your favorite scenes from the original movies re-envisioned by LEGO characters in glorious 480p resolution. The boulder scene, the rope bridge scene, the guy getting cut in half by a propeller scene, Marion really having to pee as an added fan service scene, and of course the infamous sword fighting scene. Hey, uh, fun fact about that, there was actually supposed to be a prolonged sword fight between the two, but because Harrison Ford had a serious case of diarrhea while filming on that exact set, he convinced Steven Spielberg to just kinda let him shoot the guy instead, and I quote, this guy had trained and trained and trained and we had to tell him that he was going to die. Way to go, Indy, just... Just kill their dreams while they still have hope in their eyes. The gameplay is much like other LEGO games of the era, meaning that you'll have to use a wide arrangement of characters with different abilities to get through the game. Indy is your main guy that you always have on board, he has a double jump, which is standard for every male character, as well as a whip which lets you swing across canyons and pull out objects whenever you're stood on one of these wooden platforms. Female characters can jump higher than everyone else and occasionally come equipped with the ability to scream loud enough to break nearby glass as well as annoy your co-op partner. Small boys are the only ones able to crawl through the hatches that you'll find on the different levels, and every other character is basically just an Indiana Jones reskin without his whip and some random item in his hand at the start of the level. An item that, if you ever actually need to progress, you can usually find a line just around the corner, where you can then just pick it up with any of your other characters and use them to complete the puzzle. And it just so happens that the majority of the characters fall into this category, and they're all equally underwhelming and shitty. The game's difficulty is comparable to squeezing out a pimple on your testicle. Easy? Sure, but very painful. Let me give you an example. This is one of the first puzzles that you encounter when playing through the Temple of Doom part of the game. It's not too bad, looks pretty sensible, right? Push the bed over, have Indy jump on the chair, then jump on the bed, jump to the platform, and swing yourself over to the level where you then complete the puzzle. Pretty straightforward, right? Wrong. You see, jumping in this game is not as easy as the game manual would have you believe, as whenever you're standing on any sort of elevated surface or Lego object, you can't jump unless you're at the very edge of whatever you're standing on. So something as simple as getting over a bridge with a couple of holes in it quickly becomes the agony of Cuphead of Dark Souls of platformers. Now back to our puzzle, you see since we have to jump off at the edge 
edge of the bed, and the timing for doing so is pretty tight, considering that you have to be just at the edge, we found that the only way to consistently do so is just spamming the jump button as you walk off it. However, that also means that the moment we manage to jump off the bed, because we're spamming the jump button, we automatically activate Indy's double jump, which means he doesn't reach the maximum distance that he can travel with his jump, meaning that we're always going to end up just short of reaching the other platform. Yet yeah, when all seemed lost, we realized that if Willie jumps up into Indy as he's going across, she can push him up ever so slightly, which would hopefully, if timed correctly, give him just the momentum needed to make the jump. So our new strategy was now to get up on the bed, spam jump across the gap, and then just before Indy slams into the side of the other platform, Willie would jump up and push him that tiny bit in order for him to be able to make the jump, just as the developers intended. However, the timing was pretty tight, and simply getting onto the bed was a challenge in itself, but after about 10 minutes of trying, we finally got the golden run, the stars aligned, and we made it across. Excitedly, I stepped on the platform, pulled out my whip, swung myself across, right out of the camera, and respawned back on the floor. After successfully redoing the trick about 20 minutes later, we then had Willy run alongside the camera so as not to despawn Indy again, and with that, we completed the puzzle. One down, 50 more to go. Now, the more educated amongst you might say, um, heart, a lot of the problems that you're describing are caused by what's known as the sticky feet bug, which you can fix pretty easily by turning on V-Sync. Wait, what? When you're done playing through the hard mode of the various puzzles that the game throws at you, the rest of your time is going to be spent on combat, which honestly isn't half bad. You can pick up different weapons that enemies drop, from spears to swords to guns, and I wouldn't really have a gripe with the system if not for the fact that every single pickup weapon is just completely useless in comparison to the dual-wielded weapons of mass destruction that are your fists. You see, health in this game, for both players and enemies, is done in the form of hearts, and every time you get hit, you lose a heart. And aside from explosions, which are an instant kill to any player or normal enemy, it doesn't matter if the thing that hit you is a pistol, shovel, or banana, it will deal one point of damage, and since it's basically impossible to hit using a ranged weapon and your fist have the highest melee attack speed of any weapon in the game, you never really have any reason to use anything else as a weapon. What's that? You're driving around a 17-ton truck, which you're now doing wheelies in to dab on Nazis? Slam it into them, and if you're lucky, it might knock them down for a couple of seconds, all while doing no damage whatsoever. Meanwhile, looking away and wildly flailing your arms around seems to just completely obliterate around 90% of enemies in a single hit. It really is a well thought out and balanced system. Lego Indiana Jones. This is an alright reimagining of the original trilogy, decent gameplay, tough as nails puzzles, but overall it really isn't anything all that interesting and probably won't be able to keep your attention for long. Should you play it? Probably not. Should you fap to it? Absolutely. If Indiana Jones is known for one thing, it's always bringing an absolute snack of a companion with him into whatever tomb he's exploring, and the Lego art style takes the otherwise borderline anorexic girls from the movies and gives them some much needed thick Despite this, however, some scenes from the film have been altered to become more family friendly, which means that it can be hard popping a stiffy to these otherwise overtly sexual LEGO characters, and the LEGO porn community isn't as big as you'd think on a first glance. So aside from a 480p video called LEGO Indiana Jones Mountain Sex by up-and-coming YouTuber Danik360, I was unable to find any smut relating to LEGO Jones, which is why I took it upon myself to use some of your generously donated Patreon dollars in order to commission hentai to be done of everyone's favorite whip-swinging LEGO man. You can thank me later. If you're watching the uncensored version of of this video on Patreon, what you're currently looking at is the achieved art. If not, I've also gone ahead and posted the pictures on my Twitter alongside links to the different artists who were willing to take on such special requests. Everything is linked down below for your view and pleasure. As always, I've been Hart, and remember, it's not about whether or not you should fap to Lego Indiana Jones, it's the fact that now you can. <laughs> <laughs>